Well, let's stay with the theme of tomorrow's midterm budget policy speech expected to be delivered by the minister. The South African cane growers are calling for a moratorium on sugar tax. This is in order to allow for economic growth and sustainability. Let's discuss this now with the group's vice chairperson, Andrew Russell, who talks to us from Mduba Duba. That's in KZN this evening. Andrew, good evening to you and uh, thank you for your time. Firstly, let's start with how many jobs are supported by the sugar industry? Uh, good evening, Kolani. Yes, thank you for the opportunity. Directly employed within the sugarcane value chain, there are at least 64,000 jobs. Uh, but as we know, those jobs are particularly valuable because they occur in the deep rural areas of KwaZulu-Natal and Pumalanga. So those are direct jobs. We've, we've calculated that over a million livelihoods depend on the South African sugarcane value chain. Yeah. And then there is what is called the health promotion levy. For those who may not be aware or familiar with it, what is it and how does it impact on your industry? Yes, so the health promotion levy was introduced in 2018. Uh, its intended purpose is to reduce the levels of diabetes and obesity, uh, improve the health of our citizens by putting a tax on the sugar that's used in um, carbonated beverages, so carbonated soft drinks. And so when we talk about that then, what government is trying to do is to minimize this in order for people's health to improve. Yes. Now, yes. So the intended purpose is that, that uh, people would then uh, consume uh, less of those drinks. And um, the presumption is that that would uh, result in a, an improvement in the health of, of our citizens. Unfortunately, the tax was introduced without uh, the proper studies and without uh, any evidence uh, that it would be effective. And in fact, uh, in the six years that it's been in play, we still uh, haven't seen any evidence to show that it's had a meaningful or any impact on, uh, on those um, lifestyle diseases that it was intended to address. Yeah. So since the introduction of this levy, Andrew, what you are saying in your open letter is that this has led over the years to the loss of 16,000 jobs. If the minister does increase the tax or this levy, how does that impact your industry? Yeah, those uh, numbers that you quoted were actually done, uh, came out of a study that was an uh, independent study that was performed by NEDLAC to investigate the socioeconomic impact of the tax in its first year. Mm. And it was, uh, it was shown at that time in 2019 that those 16,000 jobs were lost. 9,000 of those jobs were in the actual sugarcane production sector, and the rest were in the um, manufacturing and uh, distribution of, uh, of sugar and, its, and the products made with sugar. Any uh, further increase in the tax or broadening the range of, of what would be tax has also been investigated uh, independently by the Bureau of Food and Agricultural Production, a unit uh, at uh, Tux University, and they have found that any further increase would have a significant negative effect uh, on our sugarcane value chain, particularly uh, amongst farmers and particularly amongst the small-scale farmers that form the backbone of our industry. And so the assumptions there is that one million livelihoods will be further impacted upon if there is an increase. How do you strike the balance? What does the minister need to do, though? Yes, exactly. So we, we, we recognize that, uh, that there is a, a health issue here, and um, we, we believe that the, the uh, correct and appropriate uh, approach would be to do what the minister undertook to do, and that is to consult uh, with the interested and affected parties before they consider any further adjustments. And uh, those, those um, consultations are essential so that we can uh, base any further adjustments on factual information and data. Mm. Now, that factual information and data needs to come out of the two studies that, um, that the government has committed to commissioning, two evidence-based studies. One study is to measure the total dietary intake 
of our population to better understand the full array of causes of obesity and other lifestyle diseases among South Africans, because we recognize that these are particularly complex issues and they can't be ascribed to one uh, cause alone. And the other study is aimed to measure the full socio uh, socioeconomic impact of the sugar tax, not only in its first year, but over the full six years uh, that it's been in play, and find ways to uh, mitigate the negative impact while achieving uh, the objectives. At the moment, what we have is we've got a measured, out, measured and uh, independent uh, reports that show that it's had an enormous uh, negative socioeconomic impact uh, without any evidence that it's achieved its objectives of, re of improving the health of our citizens. The cumulative effect of those negative socioeconomic impact you speak about, Andrew, when we look at the long-term viability of the sugarcane farming industry, uh, what do you think the, the long-term effects are going to be? Well, the, the long-term effects are obviously that um, there needs to be a balanced intake uh, by, by, by South Africans, by, by everybody. Um, and we recognize that uh, in order to uh, remain viable and sustainable, the sugarcane value chain needs to diversify, to diversify away from uh, sugar and molasses, which are the products that are currently produced, to a, a broader spread of, uh, of um, sugarcane-based products. And there are opportunities, studies have uh, been undertaken or, and are actually underway at the moment to investigate uh, a, a whole range of um, sustainable uh, energy uh, solutions such as um, bioethanol, uh, sustainable aviation fuel, cogeneration of electricity. All of these things are, appear to be uh, viable and possible, but it, uh, in order for that to happen, uh, we need time to complete those studies and uh, we need uh, an appropriate um, legislative environment in order for those products to uh, be introduced into the market. So there are uh, great opportunities for the sugarcane value chain to diversify. We are investigating those opportunities, but they don't happen overnight. And um, so what we need is a little bit more time. We have been given some time yeah. under the um, social compact of the master plan, but we need more time. Andrew Russell, let's leave it there tonight. And we look forward to the minister's uh, medium-term budget policy statement. Hopefully, we'll probably talk to you again if indeed um, the minister does increase the levy here because that, as you say, is going to have a hugely negative impact, particularly on livelihoods. All right, let's leave it there for now. Andrew Russell is the vice chairperson of uh, the South African Cane Growers.